This is Tim Bryce with my column entitled Nonsense Songs. Ever drive along in a car and suddenly an old tune comes to your lips, perhaps something from your childhood? Recently, I found myself blurting out, Boop, boop, didum, dadum, wadum, chew. Frankly, I couldn't remember the name of the song, which I found rather irritating. This caused me to look it up through the internet search engines. Remarkably, it was Three Little Fishes. This was introduced by Kay Kaiser and featured Ishka Bibble. The words and music were by Saxy Dowell, and the song was a U.S. number one hit in 1939. Here's a sample of the lyrics. Down in the meadow in a little bitty pool swam three little fishies and a mama fishy too. Swim, said the mama fishy, swim if you can. And they swam and they swam all over the dam. Boom, boom, did em, dadem, wadem, chew. Boom, boom, did em, dadem, wadem, chew. Boom, boom, did em, dadem, wadem, chew. And they swam and they swam all over the dam. Now, I cannot explain why I recollect this song as it certainly wasn't from my generation. Perhaps I remember it as a song from childhood. Whatever the reason I found it remarkable, I could recall it. Actually, there are a lot of old-time songs cluttering our minds. They're not particularly complicated. In fact, they're rather simple with a catchy tune. We may not remember all of the words for these nonsense songs, as I call them, but we readily recognize the chorus. Let me give you a couple of other examples. Here are the lyrics for Polly Wally Doodle. Oh, I went down south for to see my Sal sing Polly Wally Doodle all the day. My Sal, she is a spunky gal. Sing Polly Wally Doodle all the day. Fare thee well, fare thee well, fare thee well, my fairy fay. For I'm going to Louisiana for to see my Susiana singing Polly Wally Doodle all the day. This song was first published in a Harvard student songbook in 1880. It was used in several movies, including Shirley Temple's The Littlest Rebel, as well as Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. This was another song I remembered from childhood. Next one I've got is I've Been Working on the Railroad. This is an old American folk song first published in 1894. I've been working on the railroad all the live long day. I've been working on the railroad just to pass the time of day. Can't you hear the whistle blowing? Rise up too early in the morn. Can't you hear the captain shouting? Dinah, blow your horn. Dinah, won't you blow? Dinah, won't you blow? Dinah, won't you blow your horn? Dinah, won't you blow? Dinah, won't you blow? Dinah, won't you blow your horn? I don't know how I came to learn the lyrics for this song, but I did. Maybe it was in kindergarten or on a children's television show. Next one I have is Tarara Boomdie. The song originated in the 1880s, although everyone knows the chorus, Tarara Boomdie. I don't know a soul who knows the rest of it. Even the chorus was bastardized to make a childish joke. Next we have Buffalo Gals. This was published back in 1844 by a gentleman named John Hodges. The song was a favorite in Western movies, particularly on pianos and saloons. It was also used in Fank Capra's iconic movie, It's a Wonderful Life, where George, played by Jimmy Stewart, and Mary, Donna Reed, sing it as a duet. It was also used as the theme song for the movie. The chorus should be familiar to a lot of people. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight. Come out tonight. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon? Next we have Skip to My Lou. This song dates back at least to the early 19th century, maybe even earlier. The song was used in early square dancing and may have originated in Scotland. For example, Lou is Scottish for love. Skip meant trade partners on the dance floor. The chorus was quite simple. Skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip to my loo, my darling. Then we have Jimmy Crack Corn. Originated in the 1840s, probably in the South. Like the rest of the songs herein, we knew the chorus well, but not the rest of the piece. Jimmy Crack Corn and I don't care, Jimmy Crack Corn, I don't care, Jim Crack Corn, I don't care. Now, when I looked this one up, I was surprised to see it was quite racist by today's standards. So much so, I hesitate to include them herein. You could look it up yourself. I find the durability of these songs interesting, even though we know them primarily by their chorus lines. Next, we have Daisy Bell. A classic from the gay 90s was Daisy Bell, as composed in 1892 by Harry Dacra. It was made particularly popular in the modern era movie, 2001, A Space Odyssey, whereby the spaceship's computer, the HAL-9000, attempts a mutiny and must be shut down. As it fails, it reverts back to an old song that was taught by its instructor. 
Daisy Bell. The chorus is still familiar to a lot of people. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer due. I'm half crazy, all for the love of you. It won't be a stylish marriage. I can't afford a carriage, but you'll look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle made for two. Next, we have Witch Doctor, produced by David Seville and the Chipmunks in 1958. It became a kid classic overnight, primarily due to its chorus of ooh ee, ooh ah ah, ting tang, walla walla bing bang. The song did so well, it went on to become number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Next, we have High Hopes. This became a popular Frank Sinatra song written by Jimmy Van Heusen and lyrics by Sammy Kahn in 1959 for the film A Hole in the Head. Next time you're found with your chin on the ground, there are a lot to be learned, so look around. Just what makes that little old ant think he'll move that rubber tree plant? Anyone knows an ant can't move a rubber tree plant. But he's got high hopes. He's got high hopes. He's got high apple pie in the sky hopes. So anytime you're getting low, instead of letting go, just remember that ant. Oops, there goes another rubber tree plant. The song became incredibly popular, not just with grown-ups, but with children as well. None of these tunes were particularly complicated, just simple songs to brighten our day. These were not children's rhymes, but legitimate adult songs that were playful in nature. Their strength was in their catchy wordplay. More than anything, they were designed for simple fun and not to make a statement of any kind. As such, they tend to stay with you longer than you think. The fact I was humming boop boop did him down and wad him chew over 50 years after I learned it should denote its durability. It's interesting what we clutter in our minds. Besides, they were all the bee's knees. Friends, keep the faith. This is Tim Bryce in Palm Harbor, Florida. Follow me on the internet at timbryce.com.